Good morning, good morning, good morning, Dr. Mark. And I'm back with another Sunday service from the Quarantine Chapel. I am so glad that you have joined us today here yeah, for this special service. Uh, and I pray that God will bless you richly as you tune into him and allow him to inspire you. Allow him to lead you and guide you through this week. I pray that whatever obstacles that may come in your way, that you may allow the power of God to remove those obstacles or help you to overcome those obstacles in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, I am excited uh, that you are here sharing with us. Uh, and please continue to share with your family members and friends and loved ones. Uh, listen to this song. Uh, it's called A Glorious Church uh, from the Gators. Uh, and I tell you, I grew up listening to them. Uh, it brings back memories uh, of uh, crusades, uh, island-wide crusades, uh, and uh, some inspiring gospel music. Listen uh, to this song today. Come on, join me if you know that song. <laughs> Did you hear the coming, brothers? Up the streets of life. Glory shining garments. Oh, it's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Washed in the flood of the land. Oh, it's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Washed in the blood of the land. Now that's gospel. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Come on, sing it now. Oh, it's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, it's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, it's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. A glorious church uh, washed in uh, the blood of the Lamb. Uh, and since we're in the book of Revelation and uh, we're listening uh, to uh, John the Apostle, the Revelator, uh, what God has revealed to him uh, to the seven churches, uh, we are now going to be looking at uh, the church of Spir Smyrna and what God uh, had to say to them. Uh, reading from uh, the book of Revelation and uh, reading from uh, chapter 2 uh, from uh, verse 8. Uh, it says, uh, To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, uh, These are the words of him who is uh, the first and the last, uh, who died and came to life again. I know your affliction and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, uh, the devil would put some of you in prison uh, to test you and you will suffer persecution 
for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death and I will give you the crown of life. Hallelujah. Uh, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Uh, he who overcomes uh, will uh, not be hurt uh, at all uh, by uh, the second death. Uh, he who overcomes uh, will not be hurt at all uh, by uh, the second death. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. May God add his blessings uh, to his word. Uh, join me in prayer as we come before the throne of grace uh, and as we trust God today uh, for his anointing and for his blessing. Father, we, we, we're thankful for your church, uh, a glorious church, uh, a church, the Lord, where the eyes uh, will have not seen or the ears uh, have not heard uh, what you have in store uh, for those who love you uh, and those uh, who are cleansed uh, and washed uh, in the blood of the Lamb. Uh, we pray today, Lord, uh, that you may encourage uh, your saints, uh, encourage your people, uh, encourage those, the Lord, uh, that, that uh, are making sure that the light uh, shine bright, uh, making sure, dear Father, that the message uh, of salvation is going forth, uh, looking for those that are lost that needs to be saved. Uh, your church, your glorious church, we know, Lord, that your church is not a building. We know, dear Lord, that your church is not a denomination. We know that your church is not based on someone's theology or philosophy. We know it's not based on someone's charisma. But it's in base in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You said that you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We know that is the power of your church. And as we look as at as we look at ourselves and the congregations that we are we are a part of, regardless of the name of the denomination, regardless of how we worship, regardless of where we live, we pray the Lord that we might be presented spotless before the throne of grace. We pray the Lord that we would be numbered in the thousands and the millions and millions that are in our world today yeah. and we would be washed in the blood uh, of the Lamb. Uh, we ask today Lord uh, that you may help us to examine ourselves uh, that we can remain pure and spotless uh, and live the life that you want us to live uh, in Jesus name uh, Amen uh, and Amen uh, and Amen uh, and indeed uh, this glorious church, uh, this church without spot or wrinkle, uh, washed in the blood of the Lamb, uh, is what we are talking uh, about today. Uh, when John, the revelator, re receive uh, the revelation from uh, our Lord uh, and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, it was to this particular church, uh, the church of Smyrna, Smyrna. And we can apply the message uh, to our churches today and to our own hearts uh, and to our own lives uh, since we represent the church, uh, since we are the church, uh, knowing Christ uh, as our personal savior. It says, these are the words of him uh, who is the first, and uh, the last, uh, the first and the last. Earlier in chapter one, uh, he says, uh, I am the Alpha and the Omega. And of course, we know that it's the first and the last uh, because it's the first letter and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Uh, and here, John is emphasizing uh, who is writing uh, to this particular church. Uh, he's saying, uh, these are the words of uh, the first uh, and and, uh, the last. There is none in between. There is none other. There is none that goes after. There is none that goes before. This is it, folks. Uh, 
This is uh, the real thing. Uh, he says, uh, because uh, I am the first and the last. He says, uh, I am the one who was dead uh, and now come to life. Uh, John, uh, the revelator, is bringing legitimacy uh, to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, he is emphasizing uh, the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, that it was not a fantasy. Uh, it was not a rumor. It was real. Uh, it is real uh, in our hearts and in our lives today. Uh, and although it happened uh, so many thousand years ago, uh, John uh, received this revelation uh, saying to him uh, that the one who was the first uh, and the last, the one who died uh, and came to life uh, is the one uh, that's speaking to you. Uh, no, this is not a message from the dead, uh, but this is uh, the message uh, of uh, the living God uh, because he says, uh, I am alive uh, forevermore. Uh, remember the songwriter that says, uh, because he lives, uh, I can face tomorrow. Uh, because he lives, all fears are gone. Uh, because I know who holds the future uh, and I know who holds my hand. Uh, I'm saying to you today, yeah, do not be fearful about the one you serve, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He who was dead has come to life and he will bring us to life again. The Bible talks about the second death right here in this particular um, uh, verses. Uh, and I want to explain uh, that to you. Uh, but here is what uh, Jesus wanted uh, the leaders of the church to know. Uh, he said, uh, I know your affliction uh, and uh, your poverty. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I know your affliction. One of uh, the hallmark uh, of the church uh, is that the church will be afflicted. Uh, do you hear me today? Yeah. One of the hallmark of the church uh, is that uh, it's going to suffer just as Jesus suffered upon the cross of Calvary. Yeah. One of the hallmark of the church uh, is that the devil is going to come and try to destroy the church and afflict the church. But remember way back in Genesis, when the prophecy went out, he bruised the heel. And the same one who bruised the heel is the same one that's going to destroy, hallelujah, the devil and the serpent when he comes to afflict the church. Uh, sometimes it's hard to say uh, to the church uh, to glory in your affliction. Uh, it's important to know uh, that uh, God Almighty uh, knows exactly what you are going through as a church. Uh, that's right. Uh, he knows uh, your affliction and, and he, he will explain a little bit more about uh, this affliction. Uh, he says, I not only know your affliction, but I know your poverty, yeah, yet you are rich. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know your poverty, yet you are rich. Uh, remember they said, blessed are the poor in heart. For what? They shall see God. Back there in Matthew uh, uh, chapter 5, when we read uh, the Beatitudes. Uh, yes, uh, God knows uh, your affliction. He knows your poverty. But then he says, uh, yet you are rich. We can say that when uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ refer to the poverty uh, of the church, uh, we can understand uh, his meaning uh, because he himself, uh, the Bible tells us uh, that, that he did not thought it robbery yeah, to put on uh, the, the, the form of a man uh, that he might live uh, among us. Uh, and if there was a leader who have experienced poverty, yeah, it's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, he did not come in a chariot. Do you hear me today? Yeah? He did not come uh, with kings uh, and queens uh, lying in uh, the hallway yeah, and welcoming him. Uh, there were no trumpets. Uh, there were no horses. Uh, there were no parade. Uh, 
He came uh, and was born uh, in Bethlehem in a stable. Uh, do you hear me? Uh, and because he was born in such humility, uh, he was born in such poverty, uh, he understand uh, the poverty of the church. Uh, that's why it blows my mind uh, that uh, some preachers are preaching uh, about this prosperity, uh, that God uh, wants you to, to be rich uh, and God wants you to be the head uh, and not the tail. Yes, the scripture says that, uh, but the emphasis uh, is not on gaining riches. Do you hear me today? Uh, the emphasis uh, is not uh, living uh, a, a kingly life. Uh, the emphasis uh, is being a servant and is being a priest unto God. God can take all of the material wealth that we have today and instantly it can disappear from us. He wants us to, to focus on the riches that we can send up ahead of us where thieves do not break in and steal, where moths do not corrupt. The riches that our Lord and Savior want us to focus on and concentrate on on. Uh, it's not the mansion uh, on the hill uh, that you pay uh, millions of dollars for uh, because you have to die and leave it there. Uh. I have seen uh, and I've heard uh, of so many rich people uh, with millions uh, and billions uh, of dollars. Uh, and despite uh, their being the head of state, uh, despite uh, they are part of the monarchy, uh, despite uh, that they were, were, were just uh, bathing in riches, uh, yet when that time come, uh, when that first death come, uh, as the Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to die. But after that, the judgment, uh, they, they pass uh, and leave uh, everything behind. Uh, you know, this reminds me of a story that was told about a rich man. He was getting ready to die. And he said to his wife, when I die, I want you to take all that I own, all of the riches that I have accumulated, and I want you to bury it with me. Yeah. I want the millions of dollars that I have gained. Uh, I need you to put it in my casket. Uh, and uh, I want you to bear with me. Uh, I remember uh, um, listening to Discovery Channel uh, and seeing the pharaohs, uh, how they die. Uh, and the things that was buried with them. Uh, and going back to the story. Uh, well, uh, that, that, that um, wife shook her head and said, okay, when you pass on, I'll do exactly uh, what you ask. Uh, and so... No doubt he passed on uh, and uh, the wife uh, did exactly as he asked her. Well, her friend uh, came to her and said, well, were you able to fulfill uh, your husband wishes? Uh, and she said, yes. Uh, and the friend said, well, how did you, what did you do? How did you get all that money uh, there in his casket and buried it with him? Uh, she said, well, uh, I wrote him a check uh, and uh, I put it in the casket there. Uh, and if he can cash it wherever he's going, uh, well, we know uh, that he'd receive uh, all of that money. Uh. Well, today I'm saying to you today, uh, no matter how big or small the check, uh, you cannot cash it wherever you're going. Uh. The currencies that we have here in our world today, uh, it does not transfer over. Do you hear me today? Uh, the bank account that we have in our world here today, it does not transfer over. And in a lot of cases, we can say those that are rich in today's standard, they are poor in spirit. They are poor in grace. They are poor in love. They are poor in the goodness of God. They are poor in the favor of God. They have no riches that can transfer over with them. But not so with this church, uh, the church uh, of Smyrna, Smyrna. He said, uh, I know uh, that of your poverty, yet uh, 
you are rich. When those words come from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I know your poverty, yet you are rich. It tells me that we are in good standing. It tells me that the power of God can prevail within our hearts and within our lives. He says, not only that, I know that you're poor. I know of your poverty, but yet you're rich. He says, I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not and are of the synagogue of Satan. God knows. Hallelujah. Because here he says, I know that I know that I know. God knows our actions. God knows our works. God knows our deeds. God knows our lives. We cannot hide anything from Almighty God. He knows. I remember in the book of Acts when Ananias and Sapphira, when they came before the apostles because they sold a piece of land and then the, the apostles confronted them uh, about their sale uh, and they denied uh, that they ever sold the land and got the money uh, and when they walked into church uh, probably dressed up uh, in their Sunday best uh, probably had uh, all uh, of uh, the Sunday dress on uh, and they stepped into the church uh, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit smite them and they were laid dead uh, as an example in the congregation of the church uh, because uh, they were more concerned in hiding the money uh, than glorifying uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, let me say this to you. Uh, if the Lord has helped you to acquire wealth uh, in this world, uh, you need to make yourself poor by using it uh, for his ministry. Let me say this again. If God has help you to acquire wealth in this world. Make yourself pure, poor by using it in his ministry. You can afford to buy a plane ticket and do some mission work. You can afford to give for out of what the Lord has given you. And I'm still not talking about the tithe and the offering. I'm talking about the favor and the goodness of God that blessed us immeasurable. And because uh, he has blessed us in such a way yeah, we should give uh, more of what we have uh, to the honor and glory of God uh, people who are alumni uh, in their colleges and universities uh, they give back to their college uh, in fact uh, I just heard uh, of one particular billionaire uh, and she uh, donated a billion dollars uh, to the Einstein um, School of Medicine uh, and she gave back uh, that billion I'm talking about the uh, dollars uh, with a B not an M uh, and uh, and you looked at that in wonder and say wow that's been generous but she gave out of what she has uh, what she she I mean she gave out of all that she have uh, and not uh, everything she had uh, but God is asking us uh, to give uh, and allow uh, our gifts to be used uh, for his honor and for his glory uh, because he knows uh, he knows uh, that if we don't make ourselves rich in this life uh, we would be poor in the life to come. Jesus said, I know the slander of those who say that they're Jews and they're not, but are rather the synagogue of Satan. Someone sent me a clip the other day how now Satan worship is being established in some schools in the Caribbean, one particular Trinidad and uh, they're inviting kids uh, to um uh, to offer prayers uh, um uh, where satan is concerned and she turned and said uh, the um uh, the people in the caribbean are too religious uh, to worship satan but let me ask you let us look uh, at uh, the, 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 the guile of the devil. Uh, let us look at how we, he can entice us uh, and pull us into his own uh, worship. Uh, and uh, we need to look and see anything uh, that uh, seems uh, to 
promote evil, anything that seems to promote the, the, the Satan uh, and the synagogue of the evil spirit. Uh, we remember what the Bible tells us, we fight not against flesh and blood, uh, but against uh, principalities in the book of Ephesians, uh, against uh, rulers in high places, uh, against darkness. Uh, that is uh, the synagogue of Satan. Uh, and I'm telling you, when uh, you are confronted uh, with the darkness uh, of this world uh, and you do not have the light uh, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, you do not have the power of God uh, to bring you victory, uh, well, then your soul uh, can uh, be lost. Uh, he says, be careful uh, that we're not beguiled uh, by the devil, uh, thinking that we're serving God, uh, but yet we're part of uh, the synagogue uh, of Satan. Uh, that's the reason why we need to examine the doctrines and teachings uh, of so many people, uh, especially on the internet, uh, that, that wants us to pull us here and pull us there and offer us this uh, and offer us that. Uh, and, and, and then uh, we end up uh, losing uh, our soul. Uh, he says, uh, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put you, some of you in prison uh, to test you uh, and you will suffer persecution uh, for 10 days. Uh, the Bible tells us that the devil is like a roaring lion. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And because he seeks to destroy the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, he would plan uh, every every attack uh, that he can against the church. Uh, and churches, uh, you need to, to know that uh, because the devil is not going to give up. Uh, if you go down to Georgia looking for souls to steal uh, from the devil, uh, he is not going to give up. Do you hear me today. Uh, no matter where you go, uh, looking for those uh, that are lost, uh, the devil is going to come after the church uh, and he's going to cause confusion in the church uh, and he's going to cause uh, all kind of ripples in the church. Uh, but let me say to you today, uh, the Bible tells us if we do not give in uh, to the subtleties of the devil, uh, if we do not give in uh, to the enticement of the devil, uh, he says uh, that we will be victorious. Uh, do not be afraid. Uh, that's one of the tools uh, that the devil use against Christians uh, in our world today. Uh, yes, uh, he caused them to be fearful uh, about their circumstances, uh, fearful about this situation, fearful about life, uh, fearful about death, uh, fearful about each other, fearful about circumstances. And it's nothing but fear, 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 fear. He is what we call a fear monger. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, replace uh, fear with faith. Uh, because he said, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things uh, not seen. Uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, don't want you to be fearful uh, about what the devil might do to you uh, because he says uh, do not fear those uh, who can destroy the body uh, who might uh, ridicule you uh, who might uh, gossip against you uh, who might put you down uh, but he says uh, fear God Almighty who can destroy both body and soul in hell uh, and that's where the power of faith comes from uh, to trust the Lord uh, he said, trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways, all, all, all thy ways, uh, acknowledge him, A-L-L, -L, all thy ways, uh, acknowledge him, uh, and he shall uh, direct uh, your path. Uh, yes, uh, the devil is in the fear monger business, uh, but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is in the faith sharing business. Uh, that, that's right. He wants to establish you in faith. Uh, yes, uh, we are going to be tested. The church will be tested inside out. And when those tests comes within our congregation, within our synagogue, within our lives, it's not for us to 
give up. Uh, it's not for us uh, to let go. Uh, yes, uh, because the devil is going to come uh, and pull uh, and pull uh, and pull uh, until he tear us apart, uh, tear us apart uh, and tear us apart. Uh, but the Lord uh, has promised uh, that uh, he would strengthen us. Uh, the Lord has promised uh, that he will fill us. Uh, the Lord has promised uh, that he will bless us uh, and bless us continually. Uh, so we don't have to be fearful uh, about the devil. Uh, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven uh, and in earth. Do you hear me today? All power is given unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in heaven and on earth. Uh, that's why he said from the very beginning that I am the first. Uh, I am the last. Uh, I am the one who was dead uh, but now has come to life. Uh, this is one of the few churches that God did not condemn. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did not bring condemnation for anything. Out of the seven churches that the revelation came to the Apostle John, this church, the church of Smyrna, was one of two churches that our Lord and Savior Christ did not condemn. But hear what he says. He says, be faithful even to the point of death and I will give you the crown of life. Uh, faithfulness, uh, faithfulness, uh, faithfulness. God wants you to hang in there. The Bible says the race is not for the swift, uh, but he that endures to the end. Uh, just as uh, he is faithful to us, uh, he wants us to be faithful to him. Uh, no matter the mistakes that you have made, uh, no matter the stumble that you have had in your life, uh, no matter the discouragement that you may have experienced, uh, no matter the, the falter that may happen in your life, uh, yet he says, uh, pull yourself up to the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Come back to the altar for forgiveness. Uh, allow the power of God uh, to saturate your heart and saturate your life. Uh, allow him to rise, to raise you up from the dead uh, and bring you to life. Uh, that you can experience uh, the spiritual victory uh, and the spiritual power that comes from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, if we are about to allow the Lord to raise us up uh, and if we are faithful to him uh, oh the reward uh, the reward uh, it is unspeakable uh, the reward is full of glory yeah you know I remember there was a time when I was growing up that businesses was faithful to their workers uh, and they will do everything that they that they that's within their power to ensure that they have uh, a long uh, working life with them. Uh, and then uh, not only that, they bless them uh, with a retirement check uh, and then take care of them uh, after they've retired. Uh, and even invite them back uh, because they were so proud uh, of their faithfulness uh, and so proud uh, of their work. Uh. But today, uh, we don't see uh, that faithfulness where companies uh, are concerned anymore. We don't see that faithfulness uh, where friendship uh, are concerned anymore. We don't see that faithfulness uh, even within your family structure uh, where, where parents uh, and children are concerned anymore. Uh, it just seems like uh, everyone uh, has that short attention span uh, and move on uh, to something else. Uh, there is not sense there is no sense of endurance uh, people who hop from one church to the other uh, what in the world are you looking for Jesus Christ is in every one of the church uh, he needs you to be faithful in your service uh, he needs to be faithful in your devotion uh, he needs you to be faithful uh, in your conviction uh, he needs you to be faithful uh, in every sense of the word to him uh, because he says that uh, he will honor your faithfulness. Uh, he will reward your faithfulness. Uh, he will bless uh, your faithfulness. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and he's not just going to give you a golden rock, uh, watch uh, or just a retirement. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, that he says, uh, I will give you the crown of life. Uh, there is no greater accomplishment uh, than to receive uh, the crown of life. 
life. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Uh, many of us saw uh, when uh, um, uh, the, the king uh, of England uh, has ascended to the throne because uh, his uh, mother died, uh, King Charles, uh, and uh, the crown uh, that was uh, on his head. Uh, but you know, they say that that crown is so heavy uh, that he cannot wear it. Uh, and he cannot wear it all the time. Uh, he just have to put it on for show uh, and then put it back uh, in its place. Uh, but this crown of life, uh, hallelujah, it would be life abundant, uh, life everlasting, uh, life uh, full of glory, uh, life uh, full of the presence of the Lord, uh, life that never dies, uh, life that's everlasting. Uh, oh, uh, I want to pray for my friend uh, who the Lord has just called home uh, and pray for his family uh, who have left behind, uh, one who knew him, who served him, uh, and yeah, now he has uh, a reward before him. Uh, he has a reward before him, uh, the crown uh, of life. Uh, oh, hallelujah. The most precious thing that we have in our world today is not money, it's life. You see, if you don't have life, you cannot spend and enjoy what you have. And then when God has promised you a crown of life, it is to crystallize your faithfulness in him. It's to crystallize your service. And he says that he promised he will give us the crown of life. But then he says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcome will not be hurt at all by the second death. Our Lord wants us to overcome because there are circumstances and situation that's going to affect our lives. And he wants us to have the victory. Do you hear me today? He wants us to have uh, the victory, uh, that we can sing victory in Jesus. Uh, we, we know uh, the story. Uh. Hallelujah. Listen to this song now. When he said, that I repented of my sins and won the victory. Yes, he says uh, to him who overcome, he will what? Uh, he will he will not uh, he will not experience uh, he will not be hurt uh, by uh, the second death. Uh, do you have uh, the victory through our Lord uh, and Savior Jesus Christ? Uh, are, 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 are you are, are you working on overcoming uh, what the Lord uh, has? Uh, place uh, before you uh, are you are you working on overcoming the devil and overcoming uh, his uh, affliction uh, and a overcoming his slander overcoming his the poverty uh, overcoming his suffering uh, and overcoming the testing the church uh, will go through these things uh, that uh, the revelator saw in uh, this uh, revelation he says the church will go through affliction the church will go through poverty. The church will go through slander. The church will go through suffering. Yes, the church is going to experience all of this for the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But he says, if we are faithful to him, despite the affliction, despite the poverty, despite the sand, the slander, despite the, the suffering, despite the testing, he says, we will endure and receive the crown of life. But the Lord wants us to be faithful and he wants us to be overcomers. Hallelujah. Are you an overcomer today? Do you want to overcome sin and overcome the circumstances of life and overcome the situations that might befall you. Uh, do you want uh, to overcome uh, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Uh, I'm telling you, if you overcome, uh, he said, uh, oh, he will bless you in ways and means uh, you would never imagine because you're part of a glorious church. You're, you're part of a victorious church. And folks, uh, when God gives you the victory, 
that victory stays with you today. Hallelujah. Do you hear me today? When he gives you the victory, it stays with you. And may the church be victorious. May the church be glorious. May the church be faithful. I pray that you would be faithful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. No matter what the circumstance or situation might be, I just want to encourage you to be faithful. Let us pray today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, dear Lord, for the faithfulness of our believers. We pray for the faithfulness of those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. We pray in the name of Jesus that you may help us to endure the slander that comes our way, yeah, the affliction that comes our way, the testing that comes our way, the suffering that comes our way, yeah, because we know it's going to be worse uh, in the years to come, uh, in time to come, uh, because we know the great tribulation is upon us. Uh, and Father, we pray uh, that you may give us the endurance power uh, that we would be faithful until death, uh, no matter what. Uh, we pray for those who've been persecuted uh, overseas, uh, all over the world. Uh, in the name of Jesus, give them a sense of faithfulness. Uh, we know that the church in Smyrna, uh, some of their leaders uh, has been killed and martyred for you. Uh, in the name of Jesus, help us to have uh, that faithfulness uh, that we can overcome the devil. Uh, we can overcome uh, the wickedness and the sinfulness of our world uh, and maintain the righteousness that comes uh, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. I want to thank you so much for your faithfulness in supporting this program. And I pray that you'll just continue to share and like and subscribe and allow the message to make a difference in the hearts of so many who need to hear it. May God bless you today, yeah, and be faithful no matter what. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, son. Oh, yes, to save. Oh, yes, I heard about this. Oh, he's growing in. And precious, and precious blood of Tony. But then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Sing it now. Oh, victory. We are more than overcomers. My Savior forever. Oh, victory. Hallelujah. He sought me. And he bought me with his redeeming blood. Oh, God has given you the victory today. Claim it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because he loves you. And he is determined that you will be victorious. Hallelujah.